Why isn't the tank wearing a shield? Fury slash prot build explained. Okay. So here we are. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay. Hey guys, Skarm here. Recently I got a comment on one of my videos asking what my warrior's talent build is. Up until recently, warrior tanks have been specced into deep prot with shield slam with a few points in the arms and fury tree. Okay. However, the meta has shifted in more hardcore guilds. Look at his rage, man. As much threat as possible. Look at his Dude, rage. DPS pushing their limits and doing as much damage as they can. Okay. To do this, tanks have been running a fury prot build focused more on doing damage and generating threat as opposed to maximizing mitigation. Right. In this video, I'll be going over the talent build in detail and explaining its strengths and weaknesses. Okay. All right, so here we are in the talent calculator. Here I'm going to be just going over the each talent one by one and explaining, you know, kind of okay. why they're good. You spam so, heroic strike. It's arms tree, we don't get anything. I in like arms that. tree for this build. Everything's in fury. Product. So you don't even get parry. So starting at the fury tree, you get five okay. points in cruelty for five critical strike. That's Got it. Very useful. That makes sense. Booming that just makes not sense. Really necessary. It just increase, increases the. It's more of a PvP talent. You know, it's, it doesn't actually boost damage or anything. It just increases the duration and the range okay. of battle and demo shout. Not Obviously cruelty. In PvE. Obviously cruelty. Next, down the tree, we have improved demoralizing shout, which is something that, in my opinion, a fear warrior should get. Uh, depending on the boss, the tank should be focused more on you know staying alive. And I'm going to just skip damage. through the talent section. So I think we can basically understand the talent warrior. section. So if you want the improved version, you should have a... Jesse, yeah. do you guys want to watch the talent version or not? Or what talent part or not? Opinion? Skip it. The other okay, talent, right, we'll Unbridled it. Wrath, that's very good. Okay, we want to hear it. Especially right, right, since it. this uh, build revolves around dual wielding. Right, okay, so this is Unbridled so Wrath, it's really good for dual wielding. To generate an additional raid point, rage okay. point whenever you deal damage to the weapon really adds up. Right, of course. Next down the tree, we have the third tier. These talents Blood are craze. somewhat flexible. I do. Really like Piercing Howl. I think it's important because it's, it's good for five mans and twenty mans. It's a it's a good item. Um, and it's a good it's a good talent. It it's a good build. So I think it's good that I always get this talent personally. Technically, makes when sense. tanking a boss, you don't you know use Piercing Howl. Obviously, makes but sense. But for just one point, I think it's a very useful move to have. Of course, improve cleave. Sounds good. Shit ass you ability. see, uh, you get one hundred twenty percent bonus shit damage ass from cleave. Ability. However. What the bonus damage is, is what Cleave does, it does a, does weapon damage plus, I believe it's 50, 50 at right max there. rank. Yep, there it is. The 120% damage only applies to that 50. So that's like it doesn't what? doesn't apply to the base weapon damage. 60 so more damage. Sounds like a really good talent until you read the fine print I think and realize so, okay. it's just the bonus damage. So you could get this, but it's I... It's an improved piece of shit. It. We have Blood Craze that when you get crit, you regenerate... It says zero right here, but you actually 3%. regenerate 3% of your health, right. your total health over six seconds. Okay. Which the more health you have, the more you'll regen. Of However, course. with the amount of Naturally. heals that should be on you if you're running this build in a guild that requires you to run this build for threat, right? I, I don't think Blood Craze is very useful. Personally, I think it's too minimal. Okay. But some people get it, some don't. You can get it if you want. I usually don't. Ah. Uh... Mm, uh, I I guess you know what I probably won't get this. You know what I, I'm not even gonna get it. Fuck it. I, I'm gonna go with this guy's spec. He, he's doing knacks. All right. I'm doing him. So four points in improved battle shout. Um, twenty percent increase attack power on your battle shout. It's you know just more AP. It's nice. Next up we have enrage, which you definitely want. You'll get crit a lot more in this build. From bosses, Ooh. which sounds a little scary, but yeah, it really, does. Uh, you know, it's usually nothing the healers that that the healers can't handle. You hear that, healers? You hear you hear that? You better pay the fuck attention. So dealing twenty five percent of more damage from all your attacks is huge. It's very it's very nice. Okay. Getting crits actually uh, kind of want that. So that's a nice ability to have. Plus, you need to get flurry. So enrage is mandatory. You have to get that. Okay. Death Wish, you might as well just skip down there and get that because obviously you want that. That's Very good well. tanking ability. That's another big Reduces reason your why armor this and resistance uh, works so well is, is because for 30 seconds you can have 20% more damage and be immune to fear. In case That's you, really good. You know, your Berserker rages down or you're not in Berserker stance when a fear goes off. You know, Death Wish is handy for breaking fear. 
Okay. Does lower your armor and resistances by twenty percent, which is really not that much. Honestly. Uh, um, it's definitely that seems like a damage, lot. But I'm gonna be honest, that seems like a lot. So we need, uh, as you can okay. see, we need four more points to get down to flurry. You can. I like to put those in. I like to finish off improved battle shot and put three into dual specialization. Have my offhand do a little bit more damage. I I, I don't know. Really, these okay points okay. are flexible. Okay. I mean, obviously, you don't want improved slam. You don't want improved execute. Why is improved execute not good? I feel like improved execute's really good. What makes it not good? It feels like because it's good. Uh, like, I I don't know. I I, I can't see it, it it not being good. Uh, can't execute in defensive stance. Just go to battle stance. Like I, I mean, just just go to battle stance. It, it, it's simple. Uh, yeah, just go berserker stance. Infinite rage. Yeah, you just just go just go berserker stance. You don't want then that. you die. You don't want that. No, no, so I don't want really not many points. You'd be fine. Many places to put the points. I like putting. You'd be fine, dude. But that's not mandatory. Okay. Next up, we have flurry. This is mandatory. You get that, and you get blood rage, blood thirst. Sorry. So there's your fury tree, thirty-one points. Next, we're gonna move on to the prot tree. We All have right. defense up to ten, and then we have the shield specialization, which increases your chance to block by five, and hundred percent chance to generate one rage when a block occurs. Okay. Even though you won't be using a shield, I'd say more often than not, you're not using a shield with this build for most bosses. Uh, However, yeah. when you do need to put on a shield, which sometimes, even if you're dual wielding a boss that you normally wouldn't put on a shield, sometimes you might feel like, you know, the raid damage is too much or, you know. Wait. One of the things with this build is that you need to be able to put on a shield on the fly. You need to be able to equip your shield quickly when you feel like you need it. And so, in some fights, you just you still wear a shield always. Like if you're tanking, like Lothab or Saffron, for example, next, like you're gonna have a shield on regardless. Fuck, man. So I like this over the defense. What? You know, defense skill. What? There's been a myth. I wouldn't call it a myth, but for a long time, uh, 440 defense is the magic number. You know, which means you need 140 defense from gear. And that's a lot. I don't have that to be uncredible. People are starting to realize that that's not so important anymore. So, and to proc and rage, for example, you want to get crit. So, this is almost, uh, I wouldn't call it a bad talent, but you almost don't want, like, super high defense. Uh, because getting crit's not a bad thing. You get more rage when you get crit, and you get rage procs. So, you so I, I don't I really want love to this sit talent down for this build. Crit. I choose to skip it. I go for shield spec instead. Okay. Next up, we have improved blood rage. You need that to get okay. last stand, and that's just a nice talent. Generally. Obvious decision there. Iron Wool. Sucks for PvE, so I mean, we're gonna put three okay. points into, into toughness. Six percent more armor. Now That's he's obviously bad. gonna get the shield block. Next one. up, one point improved shield block. Duh. You know every prot warrior should be familiar with this already. Yes. Obviously, we want five points in defiance. Right. One last stand. Now we have three talent points left over. Some okay. people like improved revenge. It's nice for five bands. It uh, supposedly the stun generates even uh... additional threat. I was. I read somewhere that, that might not actually be true, but improved revenge can be a nice talent. Even certain trash in raids, and for example, like on Razor Gore or Gothic, I could maybe use that. You know, boss fights that have improved revenge mobs could involved. be really good. It's not a bad talent. It, it, I never really, really get really it, good. but I used to think it was useless. I'm st my mind has changed to where I do see some benefit in it, but okay. I still don't really mess with it. You can if you want. These last three points are pretty optional. You could get improved heroic strike. You could get. I tend to get Sunder Armor. You get improved taunt. A few of these points are flexible, like I've said. This is this uh, tree that you see right here. This isn't the like, Sunder Armor. You don't have to get all these points exactly. A few of the okay. points are flexible. Okay. All right. As I've talked about, so you know, play with it. You know, play around with it. But this is the build I run for uh, for my Fury Prop build. So, how does this build compared to a Deep Prop build? You might be wondering. Well, uh, I'll start off by saying that this uh, Fury Prop build isn't really meant for beginners. Like, if you're new to tanking, if uh -huh. your guild isn't... Like, if you're in a casual guild where... Look this guy, he's got Thunder Fury. ...just constantly pushing his limits or... Look at all know, those buffs. okay with waiting a few seconds for starting DPS on a boss, then you know, Deep Prot is just fine. You can go ahead and stay Prot. Uh, you don't really have to worry about specking Fury Prot. Okay. Also keep in mind that Fury Prot does have a stricter gear requirement. You 
will be typically be wearing gear that's more DPS oriented, more threat oriented. Let look, look at that gear, dude. The fucking Lionheart helm. Look, look, look at this gear, dude. Look at this fucking gear, dude. I mean, like, where's my gear like that? He's got Might of I love how he just equips Might of though. Like, okay, all right, whatever. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll put this on. He's got 10,000 health. He's got 10,000 health. That's more than me. And I'm actually supposed to be a tank. That's mitigation stats. Combine that with not wearing a shield and you'll be taking a lot more damage. So if you don't have good healers able okay. to keep you up and, you know, know when to heal you, then you're, you're better off running. Yeah, like 1,900 white crit. Like, it's not even a big deal. Like, he just does that. Like, it's nothing. He just does that. Like, and, and like, the thing he just, he just does this in the video. And he acts like, oh, okay, yeah, I just, I guess I'll just put on my Mind of Menethil and just hit for 2,000 almost, in, you know, white crit. I guess I might as well do this. I mean, this is so stupid, man. He's trying to get more rage. Yeah, obviously. In a deep prod, in my opinion. Okay. Two of the main things that are missing from a Fury prod build that I immediately noticed. The shield. Were Concussion Blow and Tactical Mastery. Concussion Blow, you know, it's 45 second cooldown, 5 second stun. That's really good. It's a handy ability to have. You, know, right. you don't use it on bosses, obviously. They're not stunnable, but it's nice to have during trash. But uh, the main thing that I noticed missing from uh, Fury Prop build right away was Tactical Mastery. One thing I don't like also, look at the weapons he's using. You can see right there by the weapons he's using. That, that's his enchants on his weapons. He's got Thunder Fury main hand, Hungering Cold offhand. Literally, Keltazod tanking weapon is his offhand. He's like, I guess I'll put this in my offhand. I guess I might as well use this. You know, since I'm not using the other Keltazod Might of the weapon that I have right now. Like, this is fucking ridiculous. I, as soon as I didn't have it anymore, I wish I had it again. Let's put it that way. One of the, one of my favorite things to do on Trash, for example, is if a mob got loosed, I would uh, switch to Zerker Stance, intercept it, switch back to defense. You guys see me do that all the time. it and then taunt it. It's a high-end warrior gameplay and mechanic, but I do I, it all the time. One of my favorite things to do. I love doing that. Okay. Doing that as a Fury Prop build, since you don't have Tactical Mastery, when you switch stances, you lose, you go down to zero rage, you lose all your rage. Right. So that was hard to me. That was hard for me to adapt to. And they just uh, kill everything, that was dude. Probably the biggest thing that I had to overcome when I switched to this build. That's Not crazy. That anymore. However, where even though you don't have that ability anymore, you have Piercing Hell, which is I've gotten a lot more used to using Piercing Hell. Okay. If you slow the mobs that are that you know that you're tanking, and if one of them gets away from you, guess what? It's moving at half speed. And it's a lot easier to react and target it and taunt it before it gets away from you. So that does kind of make up for it, honestly. In addition to that, you have, you know, Deathwish is great, Flurry is great. There's a lot of, it, there's a lot of things in the Fury Prot tree where... Look how serious this guild is, dude. Like, they don't even look at the loot. Like, this is how I want my guild to be. They don't even look at the loot. They're like, all right, whatever. 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 Oh, it's just Nax suit. Who cares? Whatever. Right? They don't even give a fuck, man. And it's like they're using grenades on spiders. I mean, that's crazy. The Fury Tree specifically, where you just, you'll lose threat less often. It's a speedrunner guild? I know that. You just, they already have all the gear? I and see the gear that. you're wearing is more threat oriented, oriented, so you won't really need to... You know, mobs aren't going to be getting away from you as much, so the need to switch stances and charge with them is, you know, you don't have to do that as much. But, okay. uh, yeah, and I'll go ahead and, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it for that for now. Go ahead and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a comment, ask me any questions that okay. you may have about this build that I may have left out of the video. Okay, all right. Time. Peace. This is... The unimportance of wearing a shield while tanking, like, man, it's like somebody made these videos just to hey get guys, me to get, get me killed. This video is going to be a follow-up to my dual Fury tanking See, guide, I watched this which, one, I think, a long time, time ago. This video, uh, that video has already gotten 25,000 views, which is That's awesome big. and amazing. Thank you guys so much for for checking it out. There you go. I, I, I didn't realize it would uh, catch on like that. And he's dual wielding. But a lot of the people that I've seen comment on the video have said that, oh, there's no way that you'll be able to tank without shield in classic 
Right. Uh, that just didn't happen back in the day, and it won't happen now. It Thanks, didn't we'll happen die. back in the and day. And simply put, that. that's not true. Even in classic, um, that shouldn't be true. And in this video, I will explain why. Okay. So first, uh, what is a shield exactly? What does it do? Well, a shield does two primary things. It gives you a large chunk of armor. Yes. And it allows you to block attacks. That is what true. What does blocking attacks mean? Well, it means that they don't do every time damage. you block an attack, you reduce the damage of the attack by a little bit. It's based on, yes. and that's based on your block value. That I would is say, true. just for example, Very true. A, a tank that's progressing through BWL or is clear BWL probably is around 100 block value. What, what, what that means really? is that every time you block an attack, uh, 100 damage will be taken off You know what it would have done. What blocking also does, which is... Wait, that's it? It's 100? Wow. Well, yeah, no, I know he obviously has a... His FPS is low. He's no changes kind of guy, probably. And so he's still using the computer that he used back in 2006. I would say the most important thing about having yeah, obviously. shield is... Uh, whenever you block, dodge, parry... Well, obviously, when you dodge or parry, but... Whenever you block an attack, that attack cannot crit you and it cannot crush you. Who gives a fuck about that? So, all right, so if blocking really only affects... Listen, if blocking only affects your armor... Who gives a fuck about armor, number one? Number two, it only affects the block itself, which only reduces it by 100 damage. Who cares? Who can't? Who gives a fuck, dude? Boss. Meaning that the damage from that attack will always be consistent. Right. So, you know, a crushing blow does one and a half times the normal damage. A crit does twice the normal damage. Good. That's right. more rare. Three shields that I think a lot of people who played vanilla are familiar with are the Draconian Deflector, That's the, one the I Aegis have. of the Blood God, and Elementium Reinforced Bulwark. Very true. So these, the reason I picked out these, these three shields as examples is because pr uh, chances are if you play the entirety of Vanilla as a warrior, mm -hmm. these are, you might only ever go through these three shields. I bet better I'll not be true example. for me. On the server I've been I'm that playing better not be true between for me. entering my first raid in Molten Core and killing Kel'Thuzad, I had two of these shields and no other shield. I had the okay. Draconian Deflector and I had the Bulwark. Element team reinforced bulwark. Wait, that he just equipped my hammer. That's it. I killed Kel'Thuzad with the bulwark, and simply put, because what after the that, fuck? the next clear upgrade that's for my hammer. Is Saffron, which is the second to last boss. So, chances oh are, God. if you ever get the bulwark, you'll have that for the whole game. And along the way, you will hopefully pick up either. Is he using that to AoE stun the Aquite so they now, don't cast? If you look at these three shields. Um, they have between about 2100 and 2900 armor. Now, that's a lot of that's armor, smart. so you were probably thinking, well, shit, if you take off your shield, you'll be taking a huge armor hit. Okay. Well, not necessarily. That's a good idea. There are various armor consumes in the game that right. people, for the most part, I know me for a fact, I didn't use any of these in vanilla. Um, I didn't bother them. I didn't. I hardly used any consumes to begin with, which one uh... of the main things about people's memories of vanilla versus now or what, what things will be like in classic is the amount of preparation people put in a raid. Back That's then, a big no pull. Really ever, I don't think I ever That's got a big fucking a pull, dude. That's um, a big old fucking we, pull. Know, we didn't wait to drop our Nixie heads God or damn. car hearts. We just, as soon as someone got them, they dropped it and got the item. We Holy didn't wait shit. for a raid to drop them like we do now. So people didn't really know about okay. consumables. Like, I I think the first flask I used was on Patrick and Nex. I never used a flask before that. As a matter of fact, funny story. I never used a flask in vanilla well. I never did. I didn't even use it. The first time I used a flask was in, like, fucking SSC because my guild made me use them. They were like, listen, Asmongold. Listen, Asmongold. It's time for you to actually fucking be useful for once. So why don't you go ahead and do that? And uh, that says, is it going to work for you? I think that it might, Sorry. okay? Uh, real quick. Back in Vanilla, I transferred to the Kill Jaden server kind of late in, the, in Vanilla's life. But before then, I was on the server Boulder Fist. And there was a guild called Guards of Honor. They, for Princess Huron and AQ40, what the fuck? they were Dude, stuck look at those on her. Fireballs. A lot of guilds back then. Holy so shit. One night they just went in and said, We're going to, all 40 people in the raid are going to flask, you know, Titans to still, you know, whatever the Supreme Power, whatever the class needs. Right. All 40 people in the raid are going to flask. And they did that and they killed Huron. And they actually, other people on the server actually started making fun of them. They got the nickname Flasks of Honor for, for a time being for doing that. And. It's See, that's like, that's vanilla, dude. That's it. I, you know this shit's true. Because I like only, only somebody in vanilla WoW 
would meme on somebody else like, Oh wow, look at this guy using consumables to kill a boss. What a fucking loser, man. What a loser. Like, no, I can guarantee you, this is, uh, I guarantee you that story is fucking true. It's so funny for me to look back at that because these days that's yeah. like expected. Like, exactly. you're showing up to raid with the flask. You're an idiot. Aggression, especially like, you know, why not? Why aren't you uh, contributing and pulling your own weight? Right, exactly. Uh, you know, so back then, obviously it was uh, the opposite. And that's really like, if nothing else can be said about why classic rating will be different today than it was back then, or why private servers are different today than vanilla was back then. If anything can be said about that, the game. I think that perfectly, that story perfectly illustrates. People are good at the game uh, just now. Just the, the mentality shift that's changed yes. among players, and they're very good at the game now. You know, it just makes all the difference. But anyway, speaking of uh, going back on to consumes armor consumes specifically, I've listed four right here. That three of these are thirty minute to one hour buffs. The Crystal Ward, Scroll Protection 4, and the Elixir Superior Defense. Oh. Total those will give you 890 armor. Now, on top of that, you have Greater Stone Shield Potion oh. that lasts for two minutes. Gives you 2,000 armor for two minutes. You so that's like a shield. Two minute cooldown, so you can keep it up. The Greater yep. Stone, if you compare Greater Stone Shield Potion alone to Draconian Deflector. What, is he making fun of my there's shield There's only now? 153 armor difference. Which He's is making fun of my cool. shield. So, just that it, by is... itself, if you've ever seen... The tank tank any boss in like, Molten Core BWL. With what the are you trying to say, dude? I, the shield this is the best I could get, dude. If you've ever seen that, imagine taking that off and putting on an offhand weapon and then popping Greater Stone Shield Potion. The armor will be about the same. The only thing okay. that will change really is that now the boss can crit and crush you more often because you don't have a shield. Who could all this but as far as the, the non-critical, non-crushing blows that, that you'll take, the damage will be about the same between the two. If you yeah. have a shield on, or if you take the shield off and take Greater Stone Shield Potion. Okay. So, and if you if you watch any of my clips, uh, most if not all of them have. Uh, when I'm dual world tanking, I do pop a Greater Stone Shield Potion. I when I'm main tanking, okay. I carry at least 20 Greater Stone Shield pots with me every raid. How much are it's, these? Uh, great consume. I use it all the time. And yeah, it how much is worth? Really does more or less make up for you not having a shield. Even okay. on, right now, currently on the server that I play on, all armor buffs stack. Um, all four of these consumables I've listed stack. Is, I think that's how it uh, is in classic too. I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Armor, that stacks as well. Will that be like that in classic? This shit's I think expensive, so. I can't man. say for sure. However, even if you even if armor effects go don't broke. stack in classic and you just pop a greater stone shield potion, that alone will make up for not having a shield for the most part. Even stone shield versus elementium, it's one thousand armor difference. Okay. Which is it's not nothing. But that will not be the difference between being able to survive a boss's hit consistently and just getting one shot from 100 to zero. Like, in other words, the healers, if they I think I'm gonna do it correctly, they'll still be able to heal you. I, I think I'm going to do it. Now, there are times where having a shield is recommended. For example, when AoE tanking, when you're tanking several different mobs, you always want to have a shield on because what? that block value that I mentioned earlier, let's say you have 100 block value. Okay. If a boss is hitting you for 2,000 damage, no. that's that, block, that 100 block value is not going to doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, it's 10%. It helps a little bit, but it's usually not the difference between life and death. However, if you're tanking 20 different mobs... Yeah, this just makes for sense. For example, in the suppression room, if you're tanking 20 different mobs that all hit you for... Well, that will never happen because I'll lose aggro. And if you block their attacks, then guess what? They're hitting you for zero. And all of a sudden, you can tank you know, several different mobs without taking an unreasonable amount of damage. Whereas if you were to take off your shield in that situation... The damage difference would be night and day. Suddenly, if you know, if you ever want to try it while tanking, uh, you don't even have to take off your shield. Just turn your back to the mob to where you can't block. If you're okay. tanking, you know, ten different mobs at once, and you're doing fine, go ahead and turn your back to the mob and see what happens. You'll be taking a lot more damage all of a sudden, which would be the same effect if you were to do will tank in that situation. Not really. So not really. Not a good idea to do will tank when you're tanking. I'm talking several different mobs. You can not get away with like two or three. But I would say more than that, you... No, there's no way. Because the damage that you take will be reduced significantly. Uh, in okay. addition, for bosses, like I mentioned earlier, the main reason to use a shield is to become immune to critical and crushing blows. As long as you block, you cannot get be critical crushed. Now, I have a macro that... I have two macros that switches me from dual wield back to shield. Okay. My R key is bound to... I have a macro to where I go into defensive I have this stance. Too. I have this too. I put on shield, and I block with the shield. Now, for example, when tanking a boss, yeah, you can still dodge uh, where it's true, true that putting on a shield will activate, will trigger the global cooldown for all of your abilities, shield block has no global cooldown. So okay, well, let's watch how he handles this, this boss. Defensive stance, putting on a shield, 
uh, use shield block. You can bind all that in one macro. Hit the button, uh, you know, usually a few times. Just to oh, he's sure. using Nightfall. And all of that will oh, happen. Oh, shit, okay. As fast as your latency okay. is and your action time. In other okay. words, there's nothing, there's no game mechanics that's stopping you from immediately putting on shield and immediately hitting shield block. Therefore, preventing any uh, critter crushing blow. Now, yes, of course. one of the things that makes this build very true, or this method of tanking more advanced, is that you have to be aware of basically when to put on shield and when not to. I'll give you an example. If a boss is if a boss is attacking me, and you know I I'm always keeping an eye on my health while I'm tanking. That's just one of the things that you have to micromanage. Nah. If a boss is attacking me, I, and know, I know that if he doesn't crit or crush me okay. with the shield on, he say he does. I know he does about two thousand damage. Say this particular boss, I know he's going to hit me for 2,000 damage when I have a shield Not on, really. when I'm using shield block. Well, let's say I'm dual wield tanking, and right. all of a sudden the boss hits me, I look at my health, I have about 3,000 health. Now, that's a little scary, you know, so naturally I put on shield, and I hit shield block. Bosses right. typically have between a 2.0 and 2.5 second swing timer. In other words, when they're not using any special abilities, like Moral Strike or, you know, anything like that, they're going to swing at you every, between every 2 seconds to 2.5 seconds. So knowing that, let's say I'm fighting a boss that has a swing timer of 2 seconds. Um, I'm at 3,000 health. He just hit me and took me down to 3,000. Now, what that tells me is, oh shit, I need to put on a shield and hit shield block. I do that, he, he swings at me again, assuming it actually hits me and I'll dodge or parry, which happens And you out. block it with the shield block because uh, it's off the GCD. And then another 2 seconds later, passes, he'll yeah. 2,000 again. Well, that would kill me yeah, that's if what I makes didn't sense. get any heals in that time. However... That window between me going for two, three thousand health to dying in that case would be about five seconds, and five seconds is more they than enough time you. for healers. To That's be right. They should have fucking healed you. You die in five Especially seconds. Especially if heal you, you make it a point to them and say, "Hey, Let you know, know. I'm going to be dual will tanking on this boss for threat because I feel like it's necessary." So just please be aware of that. Sometimes healers, okay. some healers, if they see the tank not take damage for several seconds, they'll just kind of tune out and not pay attention. They, my healers, always do this. Well, I, I don't know what it is about them, but, like, any time, like, I, I feel like they're always tuning out. Like, sometimes when I do five mans, like, they're tuning out, man. I get, I go to zero health, man. Or I go to, like, like 60 health, and they're like, oh, oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Maybe, uh, maybe start healing other people. However, the healers, however, if you make them aware of what you're doing okay. and communicate with them, then, and just say, hey, keep an eye on me at all times. Uh, constantly be queuing a heal. You know, if I'm full health and you want to cancel it, say mana, that's fine. But constantly be queuing a heal on me to be sure to top me off. If you have three or four healers on you, at least, that are following those directions, then you can safely do world tank as uh, pretty much any boss, as long as you're able to put on a shield at the right time. That being said, there's also some bosses that you just don't want to really ever do world tank. Why not? Uh, Nax, for example, Saffron and Lotheb are two bosses where there's no reason to do world tank. For Lotheb, there's no reason for the, on that fight, simply put, there's no reason for the tank to not wear full mitigation gear and a shield at all times. You want to be taking as little damage as possible whenever possible. What Just the fuck? The fight works. And threat is also not an issue on that fight, so there's no reason to put on threat gear, really. All right. For Saffron, he hits fairly hard. He doesn't hit super hard, but he hits fairly hard. But Everybody's got in addition to got hitting the tank fairly gone. hard, can't pull threat. The entire raid is taking 600 frost damage every second yeah. throughout the entire fight. Not gonna pull through. So as you can probably imagine, that's a very healing intensive fight. Right. In addition to that, because the raid, Damn, the he's entire raid to has to wear a decent amount of frost resist gear just to be able to survive. Okay. They're not doing as much damage, therefore the threat is not as big of an issue. That makes sense. So for Saffron, you know, you always wear shield for that fight just because of the incoming damage and the fact that you really won't need the extra threat from dual welding. Uh, Chromagus and Blackwing Lair is another example. Because of people LOSing in that fight, okay. your breaths, there is often not a need for extra threat on that fight. So you can play it. That's another fight. Because you're not you maximizing your damage on. to be. You know, those are just a few examples that of makes sense. You know, when to keep a shield on all times. But that makes a lot really of sense. the part of the challenge, and in my opinion, part of the fun of playing a dual fear tank is to know when you have to put on a shield. Who no those fireballs, dude? Uh, it's a very engaging spec. There's a lot to do. And it yeah. actually, you also see some pretty big numbers as well. So it's yeah. fun being able to do some damage while tanking as well. And I think everyone, once they have the gear, they should at least try it at some point. Yo, I've uh, got anyway, the gear, dude. Gonna wrap it up for now. Go ahead I've and got the fucking know, gear, the dude. And keep an eye out for my next video. Peace. Yo, like, let's fucking do it, man. Like, I, I, dude, I've got the gear 100%, man. 100%. There's this other one. 
Wind tanks can spec Fury and Prot in Classic WoW. Uh, I, I don't know what. Let's let's try. Um, what, what, let, let's just let's just do it. Is it time I just do it? Why well, I just say fuck it and I do it? I just do it. 